Gohan lost his shoes, but he gained their respect. <laughs> Is the wall okay? An extra shot of the shoes. Maybe it's just because it's sports, but that reminds me of Hinata. Guts, X, and X Courage. Bill Watkins over here. <laughs> I like how they just give up. But they're right. They're right to give up. Nice. That was really clever, actually. It took me a second to register what even happened. He can still catch it, though. Caught. Celebrated too soon. And got hit right in the face without even attempting to dodge. I mean, obviously, we've been murdering people. He's just gone. He's done. I mean, if there's only going to be three players, still waiting to see what Bisky can do. I don't know, from here, it looks not that bad to me. It's really just Razor. Is taking out Razor not an instant win? Hisoka getting serious. Nah, Kilua. Watch, watch for a curve, watch for a curve. There it is. Bisky's, I got, I believe in Bisky. Oh, nice. Rubber, rubber, rubber and gum your way out of this. Yes. Yes. Living up to my expectations. Hell yeah. Getting aroused. What? What are you looking at, ref? What are you looking at, ref? This is rigged. Wait, but Hisoka caught it. I thought if it touched a player and then it was caught by the same team, it's not out. Surprised he waited that long. <laughs> Razor gets ready to kill Gon. Your father would have wanted it this way. <laughs> Deaf ears. Gon heard blah 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 <laughs> blah. <laughs> Catch volleyball. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hear that. Gon hears what he wants to hear. At least his arm is still attached this time. He's super pissed. Damn. <laughs> Man, going is so terrifying. I love it. And Sokka loves it too, unfortunately. You know Gon's pissed off when he's resorting to strategy. He's digging deep. Gon's stubbornness is so great in how terrifying it is, but also how real it feels. I don't think most people are really that convicted in anything. And even if they are, they're going to be convicted about a very short list of things. So what is the motivation? You know, what is the energy to push that hard? Fighting someone, especially someone you're close to, someone you care about, it's tough. It takes energy. It's uncomfortable. Where does the motivation come from if you're not super convicted in like one course of action? Which means if someone is convicted in, in one course of action, they just steamroll everyone. Even if everybody else can see the thing is clearly wrong or like or dangerous or whatever what's also cool or terrible about it depending on which side you're on if you have this kind of personality or you're good at utilizing this kind of strength you really only have to do it once or twice and people get conditioned to that rolling over <laughs> like if they fight once and get obliterated by your will they now have even less of the energy they were already lacking to oppose you while they're anticipating just as great of a struggle every time i think this is something that can be used as a tactic it might be a winner take all thing or something in the vein of like you don't have to be faster than the shark just faster than the person swimming next to you one module higher of will means you have absolute will and it's binary which i guess could be especially powerful if one was conscious of that and used it deliberately though the very same thing that makes it possible which is other people's discomfort and the energy it takes is the same thing that makes it difficult for one to do oneself another thing about this that i happen to really like when something is starting to feel right to me and i'm almost there but not quite there oftentimes it's someone telling me i can't do it or i shouldn't do it is that 
that extra boost of energy that I need to push me over the edge where I realize, no, this is the right thing to do that I have to do. This could go horribly wrong if it's just purely for the sake of being a contrarian and not wanting to feel like one is being controlled or influenced at all. But sometimes it's just the fear you have, the resistance you have, is not really authentic to you and what you believe, but is a fear kind of inherited by maybe a status quo thinking or just something you've commonly heard. But to get it as a comment from the outside coming in, it gives you the opportunity to have it as sort of a mirror or a backboard to look at it a little bit more objectively and to see how you really feel about those objections when it's sort of external to you and you have a little more of a zoomed out lens on it. And one thing that really solidifies these decisions for me is I would almost always rather make my own mistakes than someone else's. Very often, I would argue most of the time, it ends up going well. Like those instincts are special. In the times where it goes wrong, there's less to regret because I know like, all right, I was following my heart and that's truly how I felt about it at that moment. Assuming there are no like game over events like death or whatever. And yeah, it didn't work out, but I trusted myself. I went for something difficult. I didn't let myself be a sponge or something for someone else's fear or anxiety or pet beliefs or what have you. What hurts a lot more in my experience is ignoring your instincts and following someone's advice and then failing. Cause it's like, man, I failed twice. I failed the actual thing I was trying to do and I failed myself. Let's go have a mind. Oh. To Kalua's credit, totally trusting Gon's strategy. This is the payoff for this. This time with rage. Look at the sound delay. That's how fast it was. And we get to see it twice. His aura just spiked. <laughs> oh, come on. Kalua trusting him not to blast off his hands. Just rip a hole in him? Well, not yet. That's floor, right? That's floor. I'm a little bit disappointed he didn't break the wall. That's okay. Yeah, I mean, Razor's a real ch challenge. <laughs> like, he's animated as being out. His corpse just ever-present. Speaking of like having an advantage to hiding your Nen powers, Bisky is an expert at that. Like I have no idea, aside from what we saw during training. Like even in the soccer juggling game, she took a dive. And I need it now, right now. This is another one of those anime get out of this kid's way moments. The focus like that in a state of rage is kind of next level though. Ahsoka's gonna love this. Bisky adding support through taunts. Right, I mean, he's Jing's friend. Uh, uh, are we to the ball or? <laughs> Kalua, this is alley -oop. Brace yourself for structural damage. <laughs> so dramatic. <laughs> While I'm making references, that had a very My Hero Academia field feel. Oh, he's setting. Receiving, yeah. All that Haikyuu, I still don't know my volleyball terms. Well, that was kind of an admission of strength there. He gave up on catching it. Trip him or something, Bisky. What? Oh, hell yeah. That tag team, that support. Whoa, and he's out now. That was perfect. So cool, too, that Hisoka's the one to support Gon like that. How does Hisoka and Gon end up being wholesome somehow? How? Yeah, he can do that. He's the last one then, right? Oh, there's two more. Knowing Ahsoka, he's probably got some trick up his sleeve like he's left-handed. <laughs> From holding the ball? Can't show that to Gon, though. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, 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 yeah. His hands are, well, his hands are always in his pockets. Now he has a great reason. Was it because he didn't want to slow the ball down? Oh, 
It would have slowed the ball down. Damn. We're we'll really taking one for the team and for Gon's ego. <laughs> And his will. Does Gon acknowledge that or will he acknowledge that? Or is he too focused on his own power? How does Gon react to this? No one considering Bisky, huh? I keep forgetting sorry, I keep forgetting Bisky's out because of her dress, which I don't I don't understand still. But she get back, no? Why? That was a lie. <gasps> Speaking of My Hero Academia, he got the Deku hands. Odd thing for Gon. You did? Oh. I don't know. Maybe Bisky could. Is this sweet? <laughs> I'm confused. Is this sweet? Is this sweet in a very going clue way? I guess it's sweet considering they're on the same level. I mean, they're wartime, wartime friends, I guess, if you know what I mean. She says and like crushes it. I knew it. See? Damn it. <laughs> Ahsoka, you're taking one for the team. The fact that Ahsoka likes it makes me uncomfortable. And we'll never know this week. <laughs> you, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> That's what was missing. Hisoka. Best friends forever. I'm guessing Hisoka sacrifice or Hisoka rubber and gum. It's odd to think about the fact that Go knew Clue was, you know, destroying himself and still went along with it. I think that initial reading is like it's inconsiderate as a friend. But because they're both so aligned and oriented towards power and success. I think my final reading of it is that it's a sign of respect from going letting Kalua do that. You can get caught in a loop where like two people are trying to give to each other, but no one can actually give to each other because you're so upset about being a burden. It could be cool if both people are just giving fully and there's not a lot of questions being asked or it's not taken for granted whether or not somebody will willingly or gladly give to you. It can be a little bit draining when people feel like they have to earn your love, earn your respect constantly, or if you feel you have to nerf yourself a little bit because you're worried about someone's feelings. It's kind of badass in a sense that they're both on that level. And understand each other enough to know that they're both in that level and it's okay to like damage each other a little bit if that makes sense. It's a difficult concept talking about it out loud but I think the evidence of it is Kalua's reaction to Gon saying he knew and that he trusts Kalua and it has to be Kalua. That is clearly worth more to Kalua than his hands, <laughs> full function of his hands, which says a lot. Sometimes you need that wartime concierge or wartime friend in this case. Oh yeah, we, knew, we saw this. It's a phone call one. I'm glad it wasn't something horribly inappropriate this time. That is a huge relief. This is kind of bizarre, but I just thought of a experience I had that is perhaps related to this. Imagine you're a teenager and you and your friends, influenced by the movie Fight Club and the fighting game Tekken, decide to hold an elimination, full contact fighting tournament in the park. And imagine you end up fighting one of your friends in said tournament. And you have the fight and you take it seriously. You bring your A game, you're fighting and you win. Later on, when the whole group is together and you're excitedly discussing the events of the day, the topic of your friend's loss comes up and he says genuinely not as an excuse, but like, really, I couldn't give it my all because all I could think about was hurting you. It's super tricky, right? Because assuming it's real, assuming that he actually was okay with hurting you and now he's just trying to like make an excuse for the loss or what have you. Let's just say it's it's 100% genuine. That's what happened. There's a sweetness to that, just like there would have been a sweetness to Gon saying, I can't hit the ball anymore because of Clue's hands. But there's also something not so sweet about it, which is that we both entered into this thing with the same goal, same mission, same stated ethos. I went into this event trusting that or someone to say that they couldn't do it makes things weird because it violates that agreement. Suddenly the, the negative light is cast on me because why didn't I do that too? It's possible I interpret it as like, oh, you think I couldn't handle it? It's dicey, right? Like I'm not ex exactly sure saying this, what's the right answer here. But like, let's compare that scenario to like, we both fight our hardest and like battle each other, bleed it out. There's one winner and one loser between two people who gave it their all. And then we shake hands and we're still friends, you know? Like that doesn't sound so terrible to me. And that's sort of how 
how I feel about this moment. It's glorious that they're both on the same page in battle, in sync, without any headwinds dragging them down towards their mutual goal and mutual respect. <laughs>